Ooh, that feels much fresher. And as you can tell, I've decided to um, scrub up a little bit. Anyway, hello my fellow Dream Chasers. Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas, despite the current restrictions. Uh, by the time this video goes live on Boxing Day, which is uh, today actually, I'm recording this on December 22nd. Um, yeah, um, Scotland's going to be back into Tier 4. Uh, well, mainland Scotland's going to be back in Tier 4 for the next uh, three weeks. So I figured, let's um, let's get some more YouTube videos done. And as we are approaching the end of the year, I figured, why not uh, try and reflect on some positive stuff throughout this year. As I count down my top 10 games of the year. Now, if you, uh, now as always, with these sort of lists, bearing in mind this is just my opinion. Just my opinion on this. I mean, your list is going to be completely different to mine, and then your list could be completely different to somebody else's. I do have a couple of bones to pick with one or two people, but I'll take care of that very shortly. So, rules for this list. As always, it has to be a game that had a 2020 worldwide release. I can't include any remasters, ports from other systems, or remakes. I'm sorry, I know we had Final Fantasy VII Remake come out this year. I don't care. It's a remake. It does not count on my list. So, if you're wondering why that game's not on the list, now you know. Oh, and I'm not including the Demon's Souls remaster as well, because yes, it was a PS3 title initially. It got remastered for PS5 as a launch title. But it's still a remaster and therefore doesn't count. But this rule will not be in effect when it comes to the honourable mentions and especially the dishonourable mentions. Oh goody, I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, has to be games that I've played this year, 2020 worldwide release date and cannot be a remaster or a remake or ports from other systems. So, with all that in mind, Let's actually get the dishonorable mentions out of the way so we can get the negativity out of the way and focus on the positives. So, first off, MotoGP 20. Now, don't get me wrong, I like my racing games, but it's quite a drastic leap from Formula One racing or Project Cars or World Rally Championship to doing MotoGP. Controls are a bit more complicated to understand and I still can't get to grips with braking properly. So that, uh, I mean, all it takes is for the back end of the bike to step out a bit too far and boom, you're off your bike and that's your lap gone in qualifying and you plummet down to the back of the field in the race. But yeah, as I say, not much has changed. It's, it's, it's one of those rare cases of it's the same game every year, just with a couple of different mechanics here and there. But here, there were no new mechanics this year. Which absolutely baffles me. Next up, oh boy, the Resident Evil 3 remake. I did say remakes weren't weren't, weren't exempt from the. I did say remakes weren't exempt from the dishonorable mentions. Capcom, 1999. Sorry, look, 2020 Capcom. Bah. Smeg, my flipping hamburgers. 2020 Capcom. This is not my Resident Evil 3. 1999 Capcom, this is my Resident Evil 3. It plays like Resident Evil 6. When a remake of my favourite game from the Resident Evil trilogy on the original PlayStation plays like Resident Evil 6, you know you've got problems. Avengers. Oh boy, Square Enix. Square Enix, where did it all go wrong? You promoted the game as a single player experience. What did it release as? A game as a live service. This is not what we wanted from our Avengers games. And a couple of clips on my YouTube channel. The camera decided to have a seizure on multiple occasions. It got to the point where the camera seizure killed my character. And I just decided, no, I've had enough. 
This is not what I wanted from my game. And this last one, oh boy. I did say I've got a couple of bones to pick with a couple of people. Time to name and shame them. Cyberpunk 2077. I haven't played this game. I have no intention of playing this game. Watchmojo.com. How dare you put this game as number one in your top 10 games of the year? How dare you have the gall to have Doom Eternal as an honorable mention? And you have the Demon Souls remaster, the Tony Hawk remaster, and the Final Fantasy VII remake, all of which shouldn't be eligible for the list. I don't care how good they are, they should not count. Why do you think last year when I put together my top 10 games of 2019, I refused to put the Resident Evil 2 remake in? Because it's a remake and remakes shouldn't count. They actually had a rule a couple of years ago where they said remakes won't count for this list. They completely ignored that. But back to Cyberpunk. The only reason why they put it as number one is because of the hype surrounding it and because it has Keanu Reeves in it. Nothing against Keanu Reeves. He's a great guy. Don't get me wrong. Never met him, but my point stands. He's a good guy. But seriously, Watch Mojo, how dare you? The game was broken. It is inaccessible for disabled gamers, especially those with photosensitive epilepsy. Um, what else? What else? Frame rate issues. The game was released in an absolute junk pile of a mess. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Watch Mojo. You should be ashamed of yourself. So there we go. That's all that out of the way. So, dishonorable mentions out of the way. And I never want to see those games again. Now, I do have some honourable mentions. Again, a couple of a couple of them I haven't played. Because, I mean, granted, I didn't actually play that many games this year, because with everything that's been going on in the world, what else can you do? But, these, but some of these games, they definitely made this year worthwhile. So, as far as these 10 games are concerned, Massive thanks to the video game industry for keeping people like me entertained throughout what's been a very, very challenging year. So number 10, Football Manager 2021. This is the first time in nearly 15 years that we have had a console version of the best Football Manager game in the world. Now, yes, I have an Xbox One version of this game, while one of my friends has a Series X version. But even at that, the biggest reason it's on here is because we've waited nearly 14, we've waited about 15 years for a new Football Manager game on console. And it does not disappoint. Number nine, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. This is a last minute edition. I actually bought this game on my PlayStation about a week or two ago. And it's the first ever rhythm game in the Kingdom Hearts franchise. With some of your favourite tunes from some of your favourites, from all your favourite areas like Destiny Islands, the Olympus Coliseum. I've just finished, I've just, I've finished the first part of... The uh, the, the uh, world tour, which they've which they've dubbed the story mode essentially, 
And uh, rest assured, folks, I am going to get the platinum on the game. Which includes full chaining 50 songs on proud difficulty. That's going to that's gonna take a lot of practice. So, I look forward to the challenge. Number... Let's see, but, uh, but like I say, it's... I'm going to say... Whenever I'm playing a Kingdom Hearts game, especially going through Destiny Islands and Kingdom Hearts 1, just hearing that music... Do, 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 I'm just sitting here, big grin on my face. I'm just like, yay, Kingdom Hearts, yay, Destiny Islands. I feel like such a big kid when it comes to playing Kingdom Hearts. I wanted to play the Kingdom Hearts games when I was younger, but I couldn't. I've said this before on my channel. I couldn't play Kingdom Hearts because my parents got an Xbox rather than the PlayStation 2, which was the system the Kingdom Hearts games came out on. Next. So number eight. Thank you, Brian Tyler. Now, it's an annual tradition that I have the Formula One games on this list. But why is F1 2020 so low? Well, this is the lowest I've had this game since ever since I started uh, ranking, since I, since I started putting the top, since I started putting the Formula One games in my top 10 games of the year back in 2015. But mind you, that was on, on, on an old channel that is no longer in existence. But nevertheless, the my team aspect of this game, you can actually create your own team. And you start off with a Formula 2 driver from the 2019 roster, including our Lord and Saviour, Mahavir Ragunathan. <laughs> and, and like, talk of the devil in Extreme Racing League. Ragunathan was abysmal in my team. And I'm holding you guys responsible for that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I love the my team aspect of the game. It's... I, I'm, I'm lost for words. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what else? Oh yeah, uh, one of the biggest reasons is one of the biggest reasons that this game is so far down on the list is mainly because of how dodgy the online servers are. Now, at this point in the franchise, especially with EA buying Codemasters, okay, guys, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Hopefully, with EA buying Codemasters, they should be able to fix the online server issues because there'll be a bigger budget. And they should, in theory, be able to have more people on board to help with fixing the online server issues, which have been plaguing the game for the last couple of years. Because League Racing is more prominent in the F1 community than Codemasters realizes. I mean, yes, you've got your, your big leagues like you've got you've got your big f1 youtubers uh tiamat marduk arava gaming uh veloci esports trl limitless th those guys but then you've got smaller leagues like i've mentioned talk of the devil extreme racing league total impact racing you got to think to yourself at this point rather than innovating the single player why not try and do something similar in the online aspect of the game. Because like I said, league racing is bigger than ever. And especially throughout this year, we had Veloci Esports doing their Not The Grand Prix series. And even the official Formula One had their own virtual uh, Grand Prix series as well. And we just had the F1 2020 Esports Championship conclude recently. So if anything, Fix the online servers while innovating the single player at the same time. Then we could very well have F1 2021 
be my number one game of the year. But we'll wait and see what happens with that. Number seven. Now, we're already into the business end because, I mean, let's face it. The seven games that are ahead of F1 2020, there is very valid reason as to why those games are as good as they are. Number seven, Ghosts of Tsushima. Oh my, how beautiful is this game? Um, there's not really much else I can say apart from it is, it is beautiful. The story is very powerful. And the fact that they managed to get Japanese voice acting. And you can actually have the English sub... I say there's various ways you can experience this. You can have it as black and white. You can have it with the Japanese um, dub over the top. And of course, you've got your English subtitles as well. You can experience it like you're watching a Japanese film. And that's what this game feels like. I can't... I mean, if I was to praise this, if I were to praise this game anymore, I would be here all day. I mean, the combat as well, it is very challenging. It's, it's easy to learn, but difficult to master. We've probably heard that one numerous times. But nevertheless, Ghost of Tsushima actually, also actually won the player's choice for Game of the Year at the 2020 Game Awards. Number six. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to hell. Population, one doom guy, a lot of demons, and one dream chaser named Kenzie Retro. My goodness me, this game was a lot of fun. You've got, I mean, how on earth did they manage to pull off something even more action-packed than the 2016 reboot? How have they done that? I mean... If you need proof on how amazing this game is, go back and watch my uh, go on back and watch my uh, Doom twenty six. Go back and watch my Doom Eternal playthrough. Playlist will be here, alongside one or two other playlists at some point in this video. Nevertheless, Doom Eternal. I mean, you you actually have to deal with clearing out every area of. The maps, you've got, you've got Slayer Gates, you've got Demonic Corruption, and you've even, you've even got, you've even got a couple, more, you've even got some, you've even got, uh, you've even got a couple of new weapons that you can use throughout the game as well. I mean, like I say, go watch my playthrough if you haven't already. You will not be disappointed, or at the very least, buy the game. Unless you're on Xbox, which, which, uh, because it's, uh, it's on Game Pass right now. Happy days. Number five, and I'm just going to have this little clip speak for itself. <laughs> yep, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. When I first saw this trailer, disregarding every game that came out after Crash Bandicoot 3, as far as the storyline is concerned, but there are Easter eggs hidden throughout the game that take that no that give a nod to those previous titles that are no longer canon. But my goodness me, this is probably the most challenging. Crash Bandicoot game that I've ever played. I mean, yes, I will admit I did actually rage quit the game because I mean, ugh. just just trying to find all this. So I, mean, I might actually I might actually get back into playing it, but that's but just in in my own time. But holy smokes, you actually need the platinum relics now for completion. Unless you're somehow unless you're somehow a Crash Bandicoot god and you can manage to get the purple dev time relics. Yep, they've got a higher tier of time trial relics than platinum. Good luck, guys. You're probably gonna need it. But in all seriousness, I mean even the flashback tapes that take us right back to before the first Crash Bandicoot game. 
absolutely incredible. Number four now. Now, if you love Takeshi's Castle and you love Total Wipeout, then this is the game for you. It is Ultimate Knockout. No, wait. Oh, wait. It's not Ultimate Knockout. Oh, that's the... Oh, that's the subtitle! Was it the subtitle for? Oh, yes! Fall Guys! <laughs> oh, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. It was a free game throughout August for PlayStation Plus subscribers. Still haven't got a crown yet, but I am determined to rectify that. I mean, Season 3, I've managed to get to the final a couple of times. Flippin' hamburgers, it is... Arrgh! I am still struggling to get that first elusive crown. And when that day comes, you're gonna hear me shouting from the rooftops. But this is a lot of fun. Not just with your friends, but my word, the challenge is just there. And like I said, if you love Takashi's Castle and you love Total Wipeout... Crash Mountain, that's the name of that game in the final. There's a rotating bar game. I see, you've got to jump over the bars. I was, I was trying to think of what, what game it was that was from Total Wipeout. And I, just, and I just realized, yeah, Crash Mountain. That game's inspired by Crash Mountain from uh, Total Wipeout. God, I miss that. I miss that, I miss that game show. A lot of fun. Number three, The Last of Us 2. Pitchforks and torches down! I know. A lot of fans are still... F are still... I won't say the word. Fans are still... infuriated over one or two particular moments throughout the game. And I am not going to say what they are, but if you want to see what happened, play through up there. This is, without a doubt, the most accessible game I have ever, ever played. The range of accessibility options for visibility, mobil uh, mobility issues, a Accessibility options for the gameplay. It's no wonder it won the most. It won the first ever Innovation in Accessibility Award at the Game Awards uh, earlier this month. But my experience of this game. It's not very often I can say I have never been so emotionally invested in a story. I have never been this emotionally invested in a story like this. And actually, earlier, I said, it was a few weeks ago, I managed to get the platinum for this game. And I will say this. It's one of the easier platinums that I've managed to attain over the course of the year. But overall, there's definitely there's definitely a lot to praise about this game. I mean, but like I said, I, I can't really go into too much detail, otherwise I was going into spoiler territory. Because I guarantee there's still people out there, six months on, that still haven't played this game. So that's why I pointed you in the direction of the playthrough that I did on the channel. And oh boy, like I said, the emotional investment that I had in this game is just on another planet. Number two, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, not the best game of the year, I mean, of course not, it's number two. But, it's definitely for a lot of people the most important. Releasing just before... Much of the world essentially shut down. Everyone's staying at home. What were they going to do to fill their time? The 
For people with Nintendo Switches, they had Animal Crossing New Horizons to keep them entertained. And I will say this. It is definitely worth the time investment. Being in charge of your own island. Not much else can be said beyond that. I... Like, I mean, what can be said about Animal Crossing New Horizons that hasn't already been said? Because, like I said, this may not be the best game of the year, but it's definitely the most important. And that's why this game's so high up on the list. So now that we've got that out of the way, we still have our number one to do. But before that, we have the honourable mentions of some games that didn't quite make the cut. First off. Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now I'm still waiting to, I'm still waiting for my copy coming through from Boomerang Rentals. And rest assured, there will be a playthrough of the game, and I will be going for the platinum. So don't worry on that one. The Tony Hawk Remaster. Right in the nostalgia, need I say more? And the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Fans have been clamoring for this for years. And nearly five years after it was announced at E3 2015, the wait was worth it. So, honourable mentions out of the way. Let's go through the recap before we get to number one. Number 10, Football Manager 2021. Number 9, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Number 8, F1 2020. Number 7, Ghost of Tsushima. Number 6, Doom Eternal. Number 5, Crash Bandicoot 4. Number four, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Number three, The Last of Us 2. And number one, number two, sorry, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, those who know me well know exactly what, those who know me very, very well know exactly what number one's going to be. But nevertheless, here we go. My number one game of 2020. If I'm being really honest here, what can I say about this game that I haven't already said? I've got a playthrough and a review as well. So, all that in mind, my number one game of the year for 2020, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. The moment it was announced at E3 2017, I was just sitting here eagerly anticipating when it was going to come out. And lo and behold, March 11th, 2020, I went down to my local game store to purchase this collector's edition of the game. How do you improve on perfection? Need I say more? Words do not do justice here. Because like I said, I've got my review and my playlist which has the whole playthrough of this game. And that is all on my channel right now. If you haven't got this game yet, it's available on PC Xbox and Nintendo Switch. So there we go. That is my num that is it for my top 10 games of 2020. Join me on New Year's Eve where I'll be doing my top 10 films of the year. I've only got one slot left to fill. Because there's going to be no honorable mentions this year. It's just going to be the top 10 plus it's going to be the top 10, 10 through 2, recap, and then the number one. It's just going to be a simple video, 10 films, no honorable mentions. And with that in mind, hope you enjoy, hope you guys enjoyed what you, um, 
what you thought. Do you agree with this list? What was your, what's your top, what's your game of the year for 2020? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a dream chaser like myself, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. End cards are on the way. And I'll see you guys on New Year's Eve for my last video of 2020. This is Kenzie Retro of the Accessible Gaming Network signing off. Thank you and good night.